Okay, in this video, we are going to calculate the arc length of a function on a specific interval, which is a pretty common thing to do, I suppose. Um, so let's see uh, what we need to know. So the one thing that you definitely need to know to do this, so I'm not going to actually derive it in this video, but arc length from x equals a to x equals b is the square root of the quantity 1 plus dy dx squared dx. So it's the square root of the quantity 1 plus, so you have to find the derivative and square it, and then dx. So if you look at that, um, and you've done a bunch of antiderivatives, you might have the sense that a lot of these are pretty much going to end up calculator problems, um, or just set up but do not evaluate, because the chances that you can actually integrate the square root of 1 plus something squared, um, not that great. So uh, let's do an example, and you'll see this is an example where we can do it, um, but they're, they're often not the easiest thing to actually evaluate. So uh, for example, we want to find uh, the arc length from x equals 1 to x equals 8 of y equals x to the 2 thirds. This is definitely a problem you might see in a textbook uh, on an exam because it ends up with something you can actually uh, evaluate. So let's see. First thing we need to do, calculate dy dx. So any problem uh, with arc length, we need to know dy dx. So this is just power rule, 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third. And now we're going to set up our integral. So s, um, it, arc length is always called lowercase s. Uh, surface area is capital S usually. Um, so s is equal to the integral from 1 to 8, square root of 1 plus the quantity 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third squared, and then dx. Uh, and now we need to deal with this. So if the problem was set up but do not evaluate, we'd actually be done and we could just move on. Um, but we're going to evaluate it. So first thing I'm going to do is actually like square, right? So I have to square that derivative. So it's squared 1 plus. All right, so 2 thirds squared is 4 ninths. x to the negative 1 third squared is x to the negative 2 thirds. And then we still have a dx. And uh, from here, I'm going to simplify this a little. So that negative exponent, I'm going to simplify. So 1 to 8, square root of 1 plus 4 over 9x to the 2 thirds dx. So at this point, it looks, uh, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to do this. But with a little bit of factoring, um, we're going to be able to do it. So uh, I'm going to get a common denominator inside of the radical. So we get 9x to the 2 thirds plus 4 over 9x to the 2 thirds, because I turn 1 into 9x to the 2 thirds over 9x to the 2 thirds. So we have that. So the thing in the denominator there is actually a perfect square. So we know that x is greater than 0, so we don't have to worry because we're between 1 and 9. We don't have to worry about absolute values or anything like that. Um, so 9 is 3 squared, and x to the 2 thirds is actually just x to the 1 third squared, which is kind of how we got it. Um, so I'm going to factor that out. So I'm taking out uh, 1 third, 1 over 3 x to the 1 third, I guess I should say. And that'll leave me with radical, basically the numerator, 9x to the 2 thirds plus 4, and a dx. So at this point, uh, I'm going to try to do u substitution and see if it works. So u is almost always just the entire thing inside a radical. So u is 9x to the 2 thirds plus 4, and calculate du. So du, uh, so 9 times 2 thirds is 18 over 3, which is 6, and then x to the negative 1 third, dx. Um, and this is convenient because x to the negative one third is actually one over x to the one third. And if you look at the integrand, we have that. So this is gonna work. So one sixth du is equal to dx over x to the one third. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change the bounds and turn this entirely into an integral in terms of u. So if x is equal to one, then u is equal to uh, nine times one 1 to the 2 thirds is 1. So 9 times 1 plus 4, so 13. And if x is equal to 8, then u is equal to um, 9 times, all right, so the cube root of 8 is 2, and then squared is 4. So 9 times 4 is 36, and then plus 4 is 40. OK, so these are the things that I need to uh, convert my integral to entirely be in terms of u. So let's see, make this a little simpler. I'm going to take that 1 third that's just kind of lurking in the denominator there. Uh, one third, take that out. Uh, okay, I'm going to replace x to dx over x to the one third. I'm going to replace it with one sixth du, and I'm going to factor the one sixth out right away. One sixth integral 
I gotta change my bounds. So one gave me 13 and eight gave me 40. And now it's just, the only thing left inside is radical u du. And I'm gonna write radical u is u to the one half. So I get u to the one half du. And this is definitely an integral that we can do. So 1 18th, um, so to integrate this, I'm gonna do plus one times the reciprocal. So 1 half plus one is 3 halves. The reciprocal is 2 thirds, so 2 thirds, and then u to the 3 halves. And we're evaluating from 13 to 40. And so it's gonna be uh, 1 18th times 2 thirds is, uh, so the two and the 18 can cancel and you get uh, 1 9th times one third, so one over 27. Quantity, sub in 40, and I get 40 to the three halves, minus sub in 13, and I get 13 to the three halves, and that's it. I'm not really gonna simplify beyond that because it really doesn't get much cleaner. Um, so for the most part, you usually set these up and don't evaluate. Uh, if you can evaluate it, just know that it's going to work. So if a problem says, uh, find the exact value of the arc length, it means there's some technique that you know that will allow you to find the definite integral. Um, all right, so I hope you found this helpful and good luck.